Okay, well, we're going to work the revelation again today. We're going to focus on Leviathan today. So many Christians are under his attack and don't even know it because, you know, them snakes are sneaky. Most subtlest beast of the field, camouflage technology. Okay, we're going to do a little review to start with, and then we're going to get into that. And we're going to do a lot of activations, a lot of praying, because I don't want to just talk. I want you to get healed. Amen? Okay, so how's my peeps in the box? I love my peeps in the box. Can we wave to all the peeps in the box? I love those peeps. Okay, ready? Okay, so we're going to start with uh, Luke 10, 19. This is Jesus talking. Again, this is, a, this is a review. It's, behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Okay, this is Jesus talking, the one that came and destroyed the works of the enemy, brought the power of death to naught and to no effect, and now he's saying, I'm giving you authority. Now, when you look up that word authority, it's not just, okay, you know, you've got authority over a little group or whatever. It's governmental. It's judicial. Okay. The word authority is, see, exosia. It means the power of judicial decisions. Okay. We have the ability to, to ascend into the court. We're supposed to live bilocated. Here on earth, where we are to govern the earth in our earthen bodies, Psalm 8, who are your earthborn man, that God has given dominion over all the works of his hands. We're supposed to administrate and judicially govern this planet through our ascended position in Christ in the courts of heaven, operating in our judicial exosia authority to, to have the right of power of judicial decisions. You know that 1 Corinthians 6 scripture says that we are been given the right to judge the world and angels, how much more even the smallest matters of life. As far as I'm concerned, you better start judging even hangnails and stuff like that. Come on, get on with it. If something doesn't, anything doesn't line up with what Christ won for you on the cross, you judge it. Did you hear what I said? Now look, you don't judge people. You don't go around talking and gossiping about people. Judge not, at least you be judged. Okay, but you can judge a behavior in them that you know is destructive to them and the people around them. So instead of talking about them, get busy putting on your judge's robe, get up there in heaven and judge that bitterness, judge that offense, judge that jealousy, judge that fear. You're supposed to judge the world, the angels, and even the smallest matters of life. We're not doing it. We're wimping out. We're down here. Oh, please get on your judge's robe. Ascend to your place where you are seated in heavenly realms with Christ. And get busy judging everything that does not bring glory to Jesus Christ. Amen? So we have the power of judicial decisions, and we can release them against serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. You know, I said yesterday, you bet you didn't know you could take a snake to court. You can and you have even more authority over these sneaky snakes when you do that because they have to, they have to obey a judicial ruling, a judicial ruling. Amen? Now it says that we have given, been given this authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy so nothing could in any wise harm us. These snakes are harming us. They're giving us cancer. They're making us sick. They're, you know, they're choking you out. They're, they're preventing you from getting gains in your finances, in your education, in, in your business, in your favor. I mean, they're attacking your marriage. They're attacking your children. They're, they're every place. Okay? They're out to harm you. That's why you have to judge them in the court of heaven. Now, that word harm, one of the meanings of it is, is uh, idico. It means this. Ready? Got it? To be a criminal, to have violated the law in some ways. Where do you take criminals? Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. You take them to court. They're trying to harm you. They're criminals. They've broken the law. And you have the right to take them to court. And we talked about yesterday how they accuse you of breaking the law. Oh, they're getting bitter. Oh, they're talking about people. Oh, they're prideful. Oh, they're religious spirited. Oh, they're addicted to food. Oh, la, 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 la. They go into court and they accuse us. Remember, he's accuser of the brethren 24 and 7. Right? 
But when you go to court, you're always going to win because of what Jesus has done for us. Jesus took the handwritten requirements that were against us and nailed them to the cross. And through it, the cross, he made a public spectacle of the enemy. By his blood and by our testimony, we overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the testimony. His blood washes away all those accusations. And we're sin increases and abounds. Grace super abounds over it. We got grace. We got the blood. We got Jesus. We got the cross. We're never going to lose. But you got to go to court, guys. You know why? Because the people that don't go to court, if you don't show up to court, you're going to lose. Okay, I know. I, I would get arrested, and I always had sickety sack of cash in my pocket because I was a dope dealer. So I, you know, bail myself out with the promise that I would return back to go to court, which I never did. And then they would send the police out after me to come and arrest me. Moral of the story, if you don't show up for court, you lose. You got to go to court. Amen? This is one of the big ways that we can take out these serpents. We can trample them under our feet. Amen? Do you hear what I'm saying? Okay. We're reviewing now, just so that you remember. Okay. And so now we're talking about all the ways. Next thing we do is the blood of Jesus. Right? We just talked about the blood. The blood is very important because Leviticus 17, 11 says the blood atoneth for the soul. Why is that important? Because it's, some, it's many times the stuff that's in your soul that allows these serpents to attack you in the first place. That's why Jesus said in John 14, 30, the prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me that's in common with him, so he has no power over me. When you have something in you, he has power over you. And you know, when you sin, it says, you know, when you break at the hole in the hedge by sinning, then a serpent can come in and bite you. That's in Ecclesiastes. You know, like those sins can actually leave a mark on your soul, a wound. And then that wound becomes a legal landing strip for the enemy. But the blood atoneth for the soul. Did you hear what I said? Because why would it, why would it say that? Why doesn't it just say the blood atoneth for sin? Because sin lives in the soul. It's your mind, will, and emotions that are sinning. Did you hear what I said? Sin lives in the soul. That's why he says the blood atones for the soul. So when we partake of the blood and we run to the cross, we're cleansing this where the chaff is, okay? Where that junk that's in your trunk is allowing that serpent to come get you. Sin, trauma, whatever it is. Anything that you have in common with the serpent. The blood will cleanse you of that. That's why the Bible also says that the blood cleanses our conscience of dead works. When you sit and you wash in the blood and you sit in the presence of Jesus and you worship, then your, your conscience, which is part of your soul, gets cleansed of dead works. And then there's no death that can come upon you through a serpent attack. Plus, remember this. The very first prophecy about Jesus Christ was in Genesis when the serpent beguiled Adam and Eve and Eve and Adam in the garden. And then what happened? There was a judgment that was put upon the serpent, wasn't there? A judgment. What was that, what was that judgment? The seed of the woman, capital S, Jesus Christ, will crush the head of the seed of the serpent. Where did that crushing take place? At the cross. At the cross, where you done? It was more than enough, more than enough. At the cross, Jesus crushed the head of that serpent, man. That's why we got to run to the cross when we're dealing with these serpents because the blood is going to cleanse our soul and the crushing will take place. The authority that Jesus released at the cross as he fulfilled the very first prophecy about him. I hope I'm not wrong. I'll have to check with mine. So we got to have the cross. And we also have to have fire. Remember, we talked about fire. The fiery presence of God. Why do you, what's the fiery presence of God? That's when you're worshiping. That's when you're singing. That's, you know, uh, maybe it's a fast. Maybe it's reading the word brings fire. You know, anything's focused on Jesus. Sometimes I just put on fire songs and, and release the fire that's coming through the worship artist that's 
you know, that, that is singing that song and singing those lyrics about fire, you know, releases the decree of me singing that stuff. I told you about me having my breast indentation fill in when I just was singing Misty Edwards' All Consuming Fire song over and over and over all night in between taking short naps. <laughs> but remember, the fire will drive these serpents out of hiding. It's hard to see them. Unless you're a snake hunter. <laughs> which you all should be. Remember what Jesus said, Mark 16, drive out demons, heal the sick, preach the gospel, baptize the nations, and what? Take up serpents. You're supposed to take up serpents. The word take up is iro. I don't know if they have a graphic up there, but iro means to remove anything that's attached to anything. They're attached to anything and everything. I just talked about that. It's up to you to take them up and remove them. But you got to be able to see them. So how do you see them? Fire. Fire will drive those snakes out of hiding. Paul picks up the bundle of sticks. Oh, them serpents got ma masterful. It's camouflage technology. Looks just like a stick. He's carrying it around. Poisonous viper right in his arms. He doesn't even recognize. He's walking around carrying a snake and he doesn't know it. How many of you found out yesterday at the end when we were doing the activation and you felt serpent come off or you saw it come off that you realized you've been walking around with a snake and you didn't even know it? How many? Raise your hand. Real high. Let me see. Up, up, up. Look at that. That's a lot of people carrying around snakes. Do you see what I'm saying to you now? Did I tell you? I told you so. I told you. Right? You hear me, right? He's carrying around, but when he put that bundle on the fire, that fire drove that snake out of hiding, didn't it? And even though it bit him, he was left unharmed. He shook it off. The fire will not only drive that snake out of hiding, but it'll enable you to shake it off and left, be left unharmed. Why? Because the fire also will burn up anything inside your soul that you have in common with that serpent. I'm telling you all the different ways to get healed. Did you hear what I said? Where's that in the, where, where's that in the Bible? Matthew 3. I don't know if you guys have that up in the box, but let's put up the Matthew 3 scriptures. Where John the Baptist is baptizing people in the Jordan, and here comes the what? The Pharisees, who he called what? Oh, you brood of vipers. Meaning they were men walking around carrying serpents. Those snakes were controlling them. They were spitting venom at people. Poison of asp is under the tongue, whose mouth is full of bitterness and cursing, Romans 3. They were spitting venom at peeps. Oh, you brood of vipers, he called them. But what did he say? One is coming. Can we have that on the board, Matthew 3, guys? Let's see. Let me see if I can find it. I'm not sure exactly. You have it? Yes. But when he saw them coming among the wealthy elite of the Jewish society, many of the religious known as Pharisees coming to the witness of the baptism, he began to denounce, saying, saying, you offspring of vipers who warned you to slither away like snakes from the fire of God's judgment. Ram. <laughs> Do the next one. Go ahead. You must prove your repentance by a changed life. Amen. Come on. Next. And don't presume you can get away with merely saying to yourselves, but we're Abraham's descendants. For I tell you, God can awaken these stones to become sons of Abraham. Amen. The axe is now ready to cut down the trees. At the very root, every fruitless, rotten tree will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. Next one. Those who repent, I baptize with water, but though there is coming a man after me who is more powerful than I am. In fact, I'm not even worthy enough to pick up his sandals. He will submerge you into union with the spirit of holiness and with raging. Fire. Next one. He comes with his winnowing fork in his hand and he comes to his threshing floor to sift what is worthless from what is pure. And he is ready to sweep out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the granary, but the straw he will burn with a fire that cannot be extinguished. Now leave that scripture up there, guys. Who's he talking to when he's saying this? 
the Pharisees, who are what? All you brood of vipers. And he's telling them, somebody's coming. And he's going to baptize you. He's going to, see that? He's going to separate the worthless from what is pure. That is Jesus' main objective, guys. To come into your heart, into the way you think, the way you talk to people, the decisions you make, the way you act, the way you feel, your emotions, and separate, sift what is worthless from what is pure. He keeps the pure stuff. He wants to get rid of that worthless chaff. In the Amplified, it says he separates the chaff from the wheat. You want that raging fire to come in and burn up the chaff in your soul that's worthless because it is the thing that's allowing the serpents to have legal claim on you. That John 14, 30 scripture says, the prince of this world is coming, but he has no claim on me. That's a, that's a judicial term. That's a legal term. He's no claim on me. Okay, and then he says, he has no claim on me. He has nothing in me that's in common with him. So he has no power over me. See, they'll have a claim on you, a legal claim on you, when there's something in you. That in you thing is that worthless chaff that Jesus wants to sift out and burn with unquenchable fire. Everybody say fire. 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 Point right here. Say fire. 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 Say fire. 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 Say fire. 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 Fire, 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 fire. neighbor and do the same thing. Go turn. Fire, 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 fire. Fire, 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 fire. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, 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 fire. fire. Get them. Come on. Command them to burn. Command them to burn. Yeah, that's right. Burn up that chaff. Burn up that chaff. Come on. Command that chaff to burn up. Command that chaff to burn up. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Burn, 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 burn. Burn, 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 burn. Burn, 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 baby, burn, baby, burn, baby, 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 burn, 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 burn! Burn, burn, burn! Hey! Hey! Hey, hey, hey! Look, fire diffuses into your soul. Let's put that up on the board. Uh, can we have it in the Amplified Classic? I think we already had some um, graphics made up there that Rachel made for me. Guys, can you give me uh, Acts 2, 1 through 3, Amplified Classic? Amplified Classic. I'll read it to you. This is in the upper room. What showed up in the upper room? What showed up in the upper room? It says, uh, leave that up there. That's it, guys. 
And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, there assembled in one place, when suddenly there came a sound from heaven, like a rushing of a violent tempest blast, and it filled the whole house in which they were sitting. And, oh, go back. It, yeah, stay right there. And then appeared to them tongues resembling fire, which were separated, distributed, and settled on each one of them. And they were all filled, diffused. Read it with me, ready? Diffused throughout their souls with the Holy Spirit and fire. Get the message. Let it soak in. Fire doesn't just sit on your head and wave around and look hot. It diffuses where? Into your? Into your? Into your? Remember years ago, I, I think it was about the Lakeland Revival time, and everybody was going around going, bam! Fire, fire, fire! And everybody kind of did that because they thought it was cool. But they didn't realize why it actually worked. This is why. So people were doing stuff they didn't know what they were doing. I'm not talking at the, that, that particular event. I'm talking everywhere. Every church I went to, people were doing that. And people would scream, ah! Okay. <laughs> but when you really know what something's doing, then you have faith for that thing to do the thing that it does. Did you, get, did you hear me? Yeah. Trouble. I sense trouble over there in the corner there. Front row trouble. <laughs> when you really understand what something does, then you build faith for it to do the thing that it does. What does fire do? It diffuses into your and burns up the chaff. Put your hand on your belly. See, we're just gonna keep on activating as we go. Activating as we go, activating as we go, activating as we go. Put your hand on your belly, put your other hand on your head, because you got lots of problems in there. <laughs> now I want you to set your brain on fire. Go. <laughs> fire, fire, fire. Diffuse into our souls right now. Diffuse into our soul. Burn up that chaff. Burn up the chaff of thinking. Burn up the chaff of those negative emotions. Burn up the chaff in our hearts. Burn up every wicked thing. Every wicked thing, every wicked thought, every wicked memory, every trauma. Burn up every sin, burn up every, every junk in the trunk. Burn, burn, burn. Diffuse into our souls right now in the name of Jesus right now 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 burn baby burn baby burn burn baby burn baby burn ignite that shaft on fire unquenchable fire cry out to the Holy Spirit to baptize you with a with Holy Spirit and unquenchable fire go Holy Spirit, new baptism right now. New baptism right now in the name of Jesus. New baptism, new baptism. Holy Spirit baptism. Right now, fill us with fire, Holy Spirit. 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 Fill us with fire, fire, fire. Right now, fill us with fire, burning fire, Holy Spirit, a new baptism of fire. We call down the 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 baptism of fire. Burn, baby, burn, baby, burn, baby, burn. Burn, burn, burn. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Some people, your hearts are burning right now because you've ignited your heart.
Fire is one of the reasons why I know that when I take Leviathan, who is called a king, a king over the children of pride, he's a principality, one of the strongest principalities in the dark realm. One of the reasons why I, that I know that when I go to court, I take him to the Ancient of Days court is because of the fire that's present in that place. Let's go to Daniel 7. Guys, I don't know. Do you have Daniel 7? And I'm not even sure we start at the beginning. This is Daniel speaking. This definitely proves that there's courts in heaven. If you can't see that, I don't know what to say. It says, I kept looking until the thrones were placed for the assessors with the judge. And the Ancient of Days, God the Eternal Father, took a seat whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame. Its wheels were burning fire. And a stream of fire came forth from before him. Thousands upon thousands ministered to him, and 10,000 times 10,000 rose up and stood before him. The judge was seated. This is a court. The court was in session. This is a court, and the books were open. This is a court. Keep that scripture up there, guys. Now look at that. The judge's bench is what? <laughs> it's like fiery flames. It's fire. It's fire. I love how it says the wheels, it's wheels. There's wheels on the throne. Why? A couple reasons. Number one, that throne is mobile. It's here right now. Number two, a wheel within the wheel denotes time travel. So what does that mean? That means that, that those fiery flames can go back in time to any place where a landing strip was created in your soul and burn it. Did you hear what I said? Now it says, a stream of fire came forth from before him. You know what those are? The fiery judgments of God against the enemy. The fiery judgments of God against the enemy. The enemy of our soul, the enemy of our life, the serpent. Fiery judgments come out and burn up those serpents. Burn up the stuff in your soul. When you go into the ancient days court, fire is doing a bunch of stuff. It's coming in here to burn up that chaff with unquenchable fire, and it's releasing fiery judgments against our enemies to burn them up, and also to drive them out of hiding because them snakes are sneaky. So before you do any prayer work at home, ascend up there. Ask the mobile throne to be present where you're at so that the fire's released to burn up the chaff, drive that snake out of hiding, and release a fiery judgment against him. Now we're going to pray right now because the rest of the work we're going to do is in the court. Ready? We're going to read it together on three. Ready? One, two, three. I kept looking until thrones were placed for the assessors with the judge and the ancient of days, God, the eternal father, took his seat, whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame. Its wheels were burning with fire. A stream of fire came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him, and 10,000 times 10,000 rose up and stood before him. The judge was seated, the court was in session, and the books were opened. Now we're going to craft a prayer from that. So decree after me, say, Lord God, Holy Father, Ancient of Days, we enter in to the highest court in heaven, the supreme court. And we stand before your fiery judge's bench, inviting the wheels of fire to go back in time through my life and my bloodline to the source and the root of every issue that came upon my life and that is in my soul 
that is allowed these serpents to attack me. I thank you, Holy Father, that as I stand here exercising my exosia authority in this holy court, that streams of fiery judgment will stream forth from the judge's bench to burn up the chaff in my soul and to drive the serpent out of hiding and to release fiery judgments against them. Lord, I decree that the judge is now seated, the court is now in session, and the books are now open. And as the charges that are against me are read out loud, it will be decreed that I will overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and my testimony in this court. And that all the handwritten rules and laws that were against me have already been nailed to the cross of Jesus Christ. The place where Jesus, the seed of the woman, crushed the head of the seed of the serpent. I declare my legal right to operate an exosia authority in this court to bring the power of judicial decisions against the enemy to completely obliterate them from my life. In Jesus' name, amen and give a shout. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We will be taking communion while we're in the court. It's the highest highest thing that you can bring to the trading floor in the courts of heaven is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. It trades your unrighteousness for his righteousness. And no weapon formed against us will prosper because we are the righteousness of Christ. This is our heritage and the righteousness is from me, saith the Lord. Isaiah 54. No word that they put against us those words will be condemned. They will not prosper. And the body and the blood are part of this victory. Now also remember, and I don't know if we have that, guys, but let's look at it, what the word drink means. Jesus said, you know, at the Last Supper, take this cup and drink it. For it is the blood poured out for the remission of sins for the many. Okay. Well, let's again look at what the word drink means. Take a picture of this with your phone. Do not forget this. This is something you need to decree every time you take communion. This is important. Okay. This is something that you should memorize. Have it on your mouth, on your lips. The word drink means, it's the word, Greek word pino. It means to receive into the soul what serves to refresh, strengthen, and nourish it unto life eternal. You have to start understanding a new aspect about communion. It not only crushes the head of the serpent as you take it in remembrance of what Christ did at the cross, the place the crushing happened, but it also heals your soul. It refreshes your soul where it needs refreshing. It strengthens it where you are weak. It nourishes it. Remember, your soul is the biggest problem. It's the landing strip. So when you take communion, you put your faith on this truth. This is the truth. It's washing away that sin, but it's also nourishing, refreshing, and strengthening your soul. We're going to be taking communion today. A lot. A lot of communion. Over and over again. 
because we're going to pull out every weapon because the enemy's pulled out every weapon against us. Our weapons are bigger and badder. You hear what I said, right? We're going to have to remember this because we're going after not just the serpents, but we're also going after the idols and the witches. Because they, they all work together. Witches always work with Snakes. Always. They each have a unique job. The witches curse you, and the snakes carry out the curse. What's some, some examples of witches and serpents? The woman with the spirit of divination. That followed around Paul then. This is all still a review, and then we're going to get into Leviathan. Followed around Paul then. What did she say? These men are here to show us the way of the Most High God. Sounds very godlike. It wasn't. It was a snake speaking, because the word divination, which is witchcraft, by the way, means one word, python. Witches and serpents always work together. You have to remember this. Do, don't forget this. So many people go after Jezebel, and they forget that Jezebel's working with a snake. They go after snakes, and they forget the snakes are working with Jezebel. This is important because they do this. They do, they do this unholy trinity because then they, they're betting on if you get one, you won't get the other ones. I'm not trying to make this about works. I'm just trying to tell you how it is. Okay? We have the Holy Ghost. We're smarter than them. So let's act like it. So witches and serpents always work together. Witches curse, serpents carry out the curse. We're going to be talking about that in with Leviathan. But... Where did Jezebel get her power again? This is still reviewed. Tell me. Who did, where did she get her power? Yeah. The idols that she worshipped. She got her power from Baal and Ashereth. She got her power from the demons God she worshipped. We're going after Jezebel. People in churches and everyone. Going after Jezebel. Going to get Jezebel out of this house. Yeah, we're going to take Jezebel down. Oh, really? Well, then you better take down those idols in your life. Because if you've got something in you that's in common with her, like you've got lots of idols in your life, you made money into idols, your, your fame into idols, your ministry into idols, your children into idols, your ministry into idols, your business into an idol. If you've got idols in your life, then she's going to have a legal right to kick your butt. You know the Bible says whoever erects an idol is cursed. Get it? So that means that you have an idol, the witches can curse you. And then... A snake can carry out the curse. Are you with me? The, whole, the unholy trinity. Do you see what I'm saying to you? Remember, the causeless curse cannot alight. The causeless curse cannot alight. That's why we got to be like dropping these idols off. Like, throw them out the window, man. Get rid of them. It's like you, you robbed a bank and the police are coming. Throw the money out the window quick. <laughs> They're going to catch you. My husband's a bank robber. 25 banks, 21 years in federal prison, escaped from three federal prisons. It's not your average criminal. I know, I married him. The perfect pair. Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about Leviathan. Some of you are going to get a headache. I call it the Leviathan headache. It's right here. How many have that already? Okay, don't leave. Don't say, oh, I've got such a bad headache. Let's go home. That's exactly what it wants you to do. You're about to get delivered. You have Leviathan on you. Just saying. All right. Guys, Isaiah 27.1, please. Isaiah 27.1. Up on the board, Amplified Classic. Isaiah 27.1. I'll read it, too, while we're waiting. In that day, the Lord will deliver Israel from her enemies, 
and also from the rebel powers of evil and darkness. His sharp and unrelenting, great and strong sword will visit and punish Leviathan, the swiftly fleeing serpent, Leviathan, the twisting, winding serpent. See, Leviathan, if you look up Leviathan throughout the Bible, Leviathan, he's a shapeshifter. He is a twisting serpent like this. The Bible also calls him a crocodile in Job 41. His name actually means the dragon. <clears throat> so when you see visions, sometimes the Leviathan, as God is exposing him to you, as the fire drives him out into your vision, you'll see him come as the serpent, as the crocodile, as the dragon. Whatever form, he's very uh, powerful, but not more. Even like this little crumb of Christ who is going to demolish him. And the Lord, with his sharp and unrelenting and great and strong sword, that's what we're here for. God's going to visit and punish Leviathan on our behalf from the court. Now notice it says, swiftly fleeing serpent, double serpent. In the next verse it says something, and, and another translation says that great twisting serpent in the sea. What does the sea represent? Oceans of people. Because seas touch continents. So whenever you see seas or oceans, it represents multitudes of people. Multitudes. That means that Leviathan is in the multitude of people throughout the planet. He's at work. Now we're going to find out what he's going to do, what he's doing. <clears throat> okay. Notice, go back to that Isaiah 27.1, guys. Notice it says he's the twisting, fleeing serpent. What does that mean? One of the things, the first thing we're talking about that Leviathan does is he twists. He twists the facts. He twists words. He twists what you say, and he twists what people hear you say. And he says he's a twisting, fleeing serpent. That don't mean he run away from you. Because he's a bad, you know what, but not better than Jesus. What that means, twisting, fleeing, is the word fleeing there represents what a snake does when it darts back and forth as it slithers across the ground. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. What does that mean? That spirit will dart back and forth between you and another person when you're having conversation. I've had, it, I've had stuff so bad. I've had people come up to me and one, they'll say, okay, I'm going to do this and this and this and this and this. And then a week later, they go, well, now I'm going to do this. I said, well, you just told me the Lord, to, the Lord, they always say the Lord told me to do this, this, and this. I never said that. Oh, yes, you did. Well, how do you know it's not me that's wrong or right? Because they said the same thing to four other people. How many of you had that happen to you? Where you said stuff, okay, ready? Raise your hand. Listen, this, this is, we're all family. We are family. I got all my sisters and me. Okay, how many people have you had where you said stuff, people said you said stuff, but you, say, you, don't, you don't think you said that stuff. Ready? Okay. Now, how many of you had that happen to you like four, five, six times? Okay, now what's the common denominator? You. Do you hear what I said? You. Okay. Be careful. If you've had this, now if you had it once, that person's probably, it's twisting going in their ears because Leviathan's on them. But if you've had it happen over and over again, and it's actually ruined relationships, or you had to leave the job that you were at, or you changed churches, or you went to another ministry, or you lost friends, or whatever, and it happened over and over again, you are the common denominator. You're getting it twisted. Don't let the serpent twist you. Amen. Now, this happens between marriages. Leviathan is the biggest cause of divorces out of every demonic spirit in the demonic realm. Because he's going back and forth and back and forth between husband and wife, back and forth between husband and wife. Because they came into the marriage wounded with junk in their trunk. And then, out of those wounds, that, 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 that serpent gets in there and begins to twist their words back and forth. They can never come into agreement. They get even more wounded because of that. And Leviathan grows stronger and stronger and stronger until they finally do what uh, Jesus said, Moses said. They got a divorce because of hardness of heart. I can't tell you, and I can't tell you how many times, and I kind of touched on this earlier, that me and my husband will be like, I'll, I'll be saying something like, what are you talking about? 
No, what are you talking about? No, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's like, that don't make any sense at all. Why would you say that? That makes perfect sense. You lost your mind. Uh, excuse me? <laughs> you know, we're ex-cons. We don't fight like normal people. I can't tell you how many times I've gone away from that fight, and a lot of it has to do with pride, which is what we're going to talk about next. And I'll repent of pride because Leviathan is the king of the children of pride. And I'll repent for my pride, get down on my knees, and say, God, take that altar of pride out of me and take it out of my husband. I judge it. We are power of judicial decisions, hello? You don't judge people, but you judge the bad things that are happening in them that are destroying them and you. So I'd be like, I judge that thing in my husband right now. I judge that altar of pride. I judge that thing that Leviathan is operating off. I judge it in me right now. In the name of Jesus, I go to war. I go up in the court. I go to war for me and my hubs. And then I'm, I'm, and sometimes it'll take me like two or three weeks before I finally get it. I'm like, a ding, 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 ding. You do teach that, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> One time I was writing my serpent master class, and my husband was like going crazy. I was like, what? I've never seen you act like this. You like, what? You've gone too far. You better get back in that truck and drive. <laughs> and I'm running my super master class while I'm doing that. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I get it, ding, ding, ding. Oh, hello. Yeah, that's right. <sighs> Man, I'll go in there, judge my pride, judge his pride. Bam! He'll come back out. Honey, I'll do anything to make this work. Like I said yesterday, that's the way uh -huh, uh -huh, I like it. Uh -huh. That's the way I like it. See, repentance, the fire, communion, judging will stop. The, I'm telling you right now, divorce rates will, will plummet. They will plummet. And a lot of you, go ahead, close every, everybody close your eyes. Who of you are married to somebody who's not here with you because they don't believe like you? Close your eyes and raise your hand. Raise your hand real big. Uh-huh. See, my husband's a Calvinist. Nobody even knows what that is. He believes that the miracles stop with the apostles. And look who he's married to. That'll show you, buddy. <laughs> How do you think we've gotten married all this time? Stayed married all 20 years. Because of understanding this kind of stuff. Amen? Whew. Okay. So let's do prizes. We're on it right now, and then we'll back up and do this other. Job 41, 34 says, He beholdeth every high thing. He's the king over the children of pride. He's the king over the children of pride, meaning if you have pride in you, he rules over you. He's ruling over you. You think I'm not prideful? Really? Let's, let's go through some little symptoms of pride. Not condemnation, just a wellness check. <laughs> but if that's you, fall on your knees and repent. <laughs> okay, ready? You have pride in your accomplishments, like your past job history, your education, etc. I had somebody who was very proud of their education and accomplishments. Look, I'm proud of people when they accomplish stuff. I, I say it all the time, Man, I'm so proud of you, that's so awesome. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. But when people start going around going, well, I should be making more money because... I have this and this and this. Well, if you know, if you need to be making more money, ask God to bless you. But it shouldn't be because you got this, this, and this, because God gave you all that. We cannot have pride in our life over stuff like that. Amen? You always have to have the last word. I know I did. Me and my husband were fighting like, 
and I'd be like, I'd back out towards the door, and I'd go, dah, 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 and I'd slam the door and run. <laughs> Am I the only one? <laughs> Repent as we go. They always turn the conversation back to themselves. They like to talk about themselves. I try to catch myself. I'll, tell, I'll, I'll go off on a tangent because I just like to talk. And I'll go, oh, I think I've talked long enough. And then I try to focus on somebody else because that's the right thing to do. It is. You know, have you ever sat at a dinner table and that person, you know, I try to, like, if, I, if I'm hosting dinner, I try to go around the table and then what happened to you? Oh, my gosh. And then, okay, where did you say you were from? Oh, my gosh. I try to spend time on every person. But do you ever have a dinner when nobody's in charge and, like, one person takes control? And then no matter what that person, another person might get in a, a in between breaths, they go, and then another person jumps in to share. And they immediately go, oh, I had that happen to me, too. And they take it back and, take the conversation back to themselves. That is pride. They got Leviathan all over them. Is that you? Just asking. They always think they're right. Well, that's like in marriage. I'm right. You're right. I'm right. I, you know, how many think you're right? You're smarter than everybody else at work, smarter in the marriage, smarter. You're the right one. I used to have a coaster that says, um, I love taking advice. That's why I always listen to myself. It's a terrible coaster. I, 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 sometimes I go, I rebuke you. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. They mock people. Even leadership. Mock. Mocking. Mocking people. Watch people on TV. You know, walk by. Oh, my God, that guy. There's that guy. You know, okay, pray for him. Don't mock them. Amen? They roll their eyes. Gossip about people to each other. Gossip about people to each other people. Rolling eyes. I got to think about rolling eyes. In prison, if you rolled your eyes on me, man, you got hit. Fast. I wouldn't even say nothing. I wouldn't be like, don't roll your eyes on me. I'm like, bam. <laughs> it's like, they'd be on the ground and said, you rolled your eyes. That's why. <laughs> don't roll your eyes at people. It's like really disrespectful, amen? Do you know what I'm saying? On the street, you'd be like, cut, I'll cut you. I'll cut you. Okay, just saying. <laughs> right? <laughs> I kind of said this. They love to talk about themselves. They love to be served, and they don't serve back. You know? I remember uh, a couple years ago, David Herzog was having his first stadium event in America, he's done it overseas. And I said, I came, I said, I called him up, I said, Dave, you know, my people and I will serve you. I said, I don't want no money, I, I, I'll take care of my own food, I'll take care of everything. I said, if you want me to clean the toilets in the stadium, we will. I said, we just want to ask if we can pray for people, so get them healed. And he said, oh my gosh, of course. We have to be willing to serve. The only people that get invited up to the podium to eventually speak and become somebody is people who will serve people, okay? If you're not willing to serve people and you're just looking for treatment, you're in the wrong place. Okay? And I serve my husband. I, 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 I try to serve my staff. Every time I can do serve my staff, I serve my staff. It's like, okay, you guys have been working really hard. Let me take you to go eat dinner. Let me take you to a movie. Let me take you to the beach. You know, I, I try to serve my people because they're serving me. And I want them to be whole and healed. Okay? We need to serve Amen. If we don't, we have pride, and then we have Leviathan. I'm telling you right now. Okay? Uh, they do not accept constructive criticism. How many of you clench up when somebody starts to correct you? It's okay if you clench up as long as you listen while you're clenching. Gotcha. Patricia King is my spiritual mama. Oh, man. She'll love you to death. Like, 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 she'll be spanking you really hard. And you'll be crying, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. But, you know, at first, you know, you clench. As long as you listen. Maybe somebody's right. Maybe they're not all the way right. Maybe they're totally wrong. But at least hear them out. And then pray into it. Because for all you know, your first initial kick, knee kick reaction will be like, that is so wrong. And then after you pray into it, the Lord will say, oh, no, it's not. That was for me. 
I was talking through them. Okay, if you won't, you have Leviathan, you have pride. You do not like associating with ordinary, unpopular people. This is my, my assistant is Heidi Vanderwall. She's been with me like 20 years. Everything's for sisters. I've, I, I've heard that comment thousands of times probably. And uh, she says, one of my biggest challenges is that people sometimes only want to be my friends so they can get to you. That sucks. Heidi Vanderwall is valuable. She's an astonishing, amazing person. And anybody who does that should be smacked. Sorry. It's just the backhand a little bit maybe. Just a little bit. You know, because it's rude. And it's not right. Don't, you should want to associate with people just because they're people and they're awesome. People are awesome. Amen? They're treasures. You're fond of name dropping. I won't even go into that. You are not teachable. You do not listen to others' advice. You don't like to be surpassed by anybody. You think you're too important to do mundane things. You're critical to those who, are, who do better than you. You have a harsh spirit or you're defensive. There's a lot of things. Any one of those on that list, did they ring to you true? Let's see the hands. Okay, let's activate. Ready? Bow your heads. This is really important. Whew. This is really important. Say, Lord, I stand in this holy court that's full of fire, fiery judgments, fiery flames, the fiery bench of God's judge's throne, testifying. And as I do, I come to the cross, the place where the crushing took place, to receive the blood of Christ which has already been shed for me, has already won the victory, I've already been declared clean and righteous, and now I want to act like it. <clears throat> I repent. For pride, for those things that I do that legally allow Leviathan to come into my life, twist, and destroy my relationships and every part of my existence. Lord God, I receive your forgiveness that you won the right for me to have when you bled and died for me. You gave your life to cleanse me of all unrighteousness, including all things connected to pride. The books are being opened in the court. And the enemy's accusing me of being my ruler, my king, instead of Jesus because of my pride. Because he's the king of the children of pride. I won't allow it. Jesus is king. And I partake of his gifts of forgiveness and the gift of repentance so I can be refreshed and healed and delivered. Wash the record with your blood. Wash my mind, will, and emotions with your blood. Wash my tongue and my motives with your blood. Wipe away my words of pride with your blood. Wipe them away from the record with your blood, right now in Jesus' name. Now everybody bow your head, come on, keep your eyes closed, and I want you to start saying that particular thing that I was highlighted to you when I was talking. And just pray, pray to God and just release it. You can even turn towards your neighbor, because you know the Bible says confess your sins one to another and you will be healed. So if you feel like you need to tell your husband next to you that you've been a butt, I invite you to do so. Or anybody else, okay? Go ahead, and I'm going to pray for you. Some of you are feeling swirling in your um, breasts or private areas. That's because Leviathan is going to come out. 
If that's you too, raise your hand so I can see. Uh-huh, I see you. Yep, I see you. Tamashiki down right there. I see you. Yep, mm-hmm. Yep, you're going to find out why that's happening to you in a minute. And that's because Leviathan is going to come out. Keep on praying. I release the power of the cross to crush that serpent right now. I release the power of the cross to cleanse these people of dead works, to cleanse their consciousness of dead works. I release the power of the blood right now upon everyone here in this room because the blood atoneth for the soul. I release that power right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I release power, power, power of the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood right now to cleanse and wipe clean the record in the court right now in the name of Jesus the power of the blood the power of the blood there is power power wonder working power in the blood of the lamb the spotless lamb the lamb without spot or blemish Jesus is spotless blemished free image his persona his character being released to you right now right now through his blood to cleanse you of prideful thoughts prideful motivations selfishness self-centeredness of being argumentative of, of being feeling superior of not wanting to serve of fighting people of wanting to have the last word of being defense uh, defensive and to being harsh and not being teachable and loving to talk about yourself in the habit of rolling your eyes and disrespecting people right now wash you clean with the blood of the lamb 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 crushing the head of the serpent right now in the name of Jesus 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 Right now in the name of Jesus, right now in the name of Jesus, right now in the name of Jesus, right now in the name of Jesus. How many are having their, the headache go away a little bit? Raise your hand and wave it at me. Yeah, okay. See, this was Leviathan squeezing your head. Sucker. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Start thanking the Lord now for one minute. Just one minute, start thanking Jesus. Go. We worship you. 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 We worship you, God. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. 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 We worship you. Worship you, Jesus. We worship you. Worship you, Jesus. We worship you. Worship you, Lord. We worship you. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 Jesus, making us holy. Holy in you, 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 
Holy and dear, Father. Holy and dear, Jesus. Holy. 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 Holy, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There it is right there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Now we're going to talk about trauma. Trauma's a big one. Trauma invites Leviathan. Here, here, here's how it goes. Ready? Here's the path. Write this down. When you go through a trauma, the first thing that we kind of, that we unfortunately do is we go find an idol to comfort the pain in our soul. Did you hear what I said? It might be food, it might be shopping, it might be you know binging on some filthy content TV show, it might be social media, whatever. When you go through a trauma and you're wounded, what's the first thing you do? You go to an, you, you go to an idol for comfort. Anybody who makes an idol is cursed, okay? So then this witchcraft curse gets released against you. And then what happens is things get tough, really tough, really, really tough, because now you're cursed, and Leviathan or somebody, some serpent is carrying out the curse. So then what? You get bitter. How many of you know that bitterness is connected to witchcraft, which allows more, it allows more witchcraft? Simon the sorcerer, remember him? I'll give you money if you show me, if, I, if you give me that ability to lay hands on people like you do and have them filled with the Holy Ghost. What did Peter say to him? Curse you for what you said. You are to be judged by what you said. I see you have a bitter iniquity in your heart. He was a sorcerer, a witch, because he had so much bitterness in him. I, I met plenty of witches. They're mean. They're bitter. Normally, it's because they've been through a trauma, and it, that trauma is so bad, they've been abused so bad or molested so bad that it turned them to witchcraft. And they got so bitter that that spirit of witchcraft came upon them. Bitter people. So you go through trauma. It makes you run to an idol for comfort. Then you're cursed. You get bitter about your situation. That allows even more witchcraft. And, then the, serpent, and the serpent's in there just enforcing all of it. What does that mean? That means trauma started it all. So if we can get to the root of trauma, whoosh, bam, we wipe out a bunch of stuff. Now, listen to the story of Job. Ready? And then we're going to activate. Worship and activate. This is Job 1. Okay, Job 1, chapter 1 and chapter 2. What happens to Job? Lots of trauma. Boatload of trauma. His servants get killed. His flocks and herds get stolen. His children are all in one house together, and Satan creates a storm because Satan creates storms to make you traumatized so he can get you, get you wounded so he can have a legal right. And the house comes down on the, you know, at the, and this whirlwind knocks down, kills all the kids. Chapter two, what happens? Struck head to toe with boils. That's a lot of trauma. Anybody been through a lot of trauma? Yeah. Okay. What happens? He got bitter about the trauma. Chapter 3. Let's go to that chapter, Job 3, verse 1. It says, after this, meaning all the trauma Job went through, he opened his mouth and cursed his birthday. Verse 2, he said, let the day perish when I was born, the night which is announced there is a man child conceived, because it shut not the doors of my mother's womb, nor hid sorrow or trouble from my eyes. Why was I not stillborn? Why did I not give up the ghost when my mother bore me? Why did the knees receive me? Why the breasts that I should suck? Why was I not miscarriage, hidden and put away as infants who never saw the light? He's basically cur he's cursing himself. He's cursing the day he was born, wishing he was never born, wishing he was miscarriage, wishing he would die, wishing he never saw the light of day because he'd been through so much trauma. It made him bitter in soul. Verse 20 of Job 3 says, why is light of life given to him who's in misery and life to the bitter in soul? See, trauma makes you bitter if you let it. If you let it, how many of you have had a lot of trauma and you got bitter about it? 
More hands. Come on. I know you're lying. All you lying demons have to leave. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, look at what he says in verse 8. Let's put up Job 3, 8 now. This is what happens in the middle of him letting himself get bitter about his trauma. In Job 3, 8, it says this. Let those who curse it, meaning curse his birthday, curse the day he was born, curse the day. Those who are skilled in rousing up Leviathan. Keep that up there, guys. Who are those that curse? Witches and Christians and other people, but yeah. He's cursing his birthday, and then he's inviting. He's saying, he's so bitter about the trauma. He's saying, let those who curse it, meaning witches, curse the day I was born. Those who are what? Skilled in rousing up Leviathan. Witches are skilled. They're skilled in handling. They're animal handlers. <laughs> They're skilled in rousing up, controlling, sending out, calling, invoking Leviathan to carry out the curse on you. Now, if you notice in this thing, I'll just kind of go back. He said stuff like this. Curse my mother's breast. Curse her womb. Let those who are skilled in cursing loose Leviathan on that day. Those who are skilled in rousing up Leviathan. The breast, the breast cancer, ovarian cancer, uterine cancer, prostate cancer, cancers of any kind, guess who's behind that? That's why some of you are feeling the swirling in your uterus right now, your private areas, in your private parts for you men. I'm sorry, I'm just going to say it. In the breasts of you women, I just did some deliverance backstage and both women had been through massive trauma and they felt the swirling. I've felt the swirling before. I once was at a meeting and I was doing this whole thing on Leviathan and I hadn't taught on Leviathan for, the, for a long time. I'd been through a lot. I'd been through a lot, a lot. And I think I let myself get bitter about it. And I was up there repenting for pride. I was teaching everybody. I was walking through it and then we were releasing fire, fire, fire. And I could feel the serpent swirling in my breast. I know you're thinking, you've lost your mind. No, I haven't. I've lived this out straight out over and over again. I felt them swirling, swirling, then they finally came out. I go home the next day. I'm just going to tell you. The next day, I have a big pussy growth on the top of my breast. And when I touched it, it shot out pus and goop out of my breasts. Wonder how that got there. And I wonder if I hadn't got rid of it, what it would have turned into eventually. The woman I told you about that I prayed for her breast, she had a baseball-sized tumor, rock hard, in her breast. It had been there for four years. She started listening to my stuff six months before I prayed for her. It started to crater. It was pouring out the most putrid-smelling goop for four years. It had crusty, ridgy, deep ridge, dry, crusty edges around it. And it, it, was, it was a mess. I prayed for her. She told me I was involved in witchcraft. I've been through a lot of trauma. I got bitter about my trauma. I said, you got a snake on your breast. She was like, what? I said, oh, yeah, it's coming out. And I prayed for her. She felt the swirling. She felt the heat. She felt the power, and within 24 hours, that tumor shrank 45%. The skin turned pink. Started, it's regenerating. This was only just a few weeks ago. The crusty edges are shrinking. It's filling in. The flesh is pink. It poured out, she said, clear, clearish yellow-looking snake-like venom for five days after the prayer. And now it's dried up, and it's no longer stinking and it's no longer draining. She goes, the, the, flo the flesh doesn't look necrosed anymore. It looks healthy. Does anybody in here have breast cancer? I want to pray for you when we're done. If you have breast cancer, you're going to come up here. And I'm going to pray for you. And we're going to get rid of that snake once and for all. Because I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission. Snake hunter. The world needs to know this. The world needs you to know it so that you can go out and pray for the world. 
because people are dying of breast cancer and losing their breasts and everything all the time. I once went to a, went to a meeting with Tony Kemp and a woman had had both double mastectomies from cancer. And when she was up in front, Tony Kemp was, was ministering and, and as he ministered, he said, I see, he didn't even know she had cancer. And I did. And I was looking at her and he said, he's like, I see you. Have, he had cancer in your breast. It's coming out now. And he commanded that spirit to come out and I saw two snakes come out of her breast area even though she never she didn't even have breasts anymore don't think cutting who do you think's making these young girls cut their breasts off curse the breast curse the womb do you hear me Okay, we're about to activate. In fact, come up and get some communion. Come on. Can I have the worship team up? Let's go. Let's get down to business. Take a big piece of bread, please. We're going to take communion more than once, take a big piece of bread, please, and distribute it like a couple, two, three, you know, bites of bread as we take it. There are tables in the back also. And uh, let me get some too. Uh, it looks like there's more really empty space up here for some of the people in the back waiting. Maybe come up here. Some of the people over here. Maybe come up here. Thank you, Lord. Yep. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Shut him at the bottom of the cape of the ball. Kate about baby, my sheep, and Baba no more. Jesus, I've got a more shaking on him. Jesus, I've got a more shaking on him. Thank you, Lord. Are we ready? Remember, we're, we're still in the court. We're still in the, 
fiery presence of the court. You know, in another version of the King James of Isaiah 27, Leviathan is called the piercing serpent. I looked that up. You know what it means? A fugitive from the law. Where do you take fugitives? To court and then to jail. Why would Leviathan be a fugitive from the law? You know why? Because he carries out the curse when Jesus has already become a curse for us. That makes what he's doing illegal. Illegal. He's a fugitive. We have the legal right to take this beast to court. And that's what we're supposed to do. Because in Job 41, if you've ever read Job 41, can we put that up on the board, guys? Job 41. I might have to go to it, but. Uh, okay, now there's some other ones. Though that one's a really good one, but they're all good. Can you find the other ones that I have up there for? It's like Job 41, 1 through 5 or something, and then like verse 8 or something like that. And I can go to my handy-dandy thing here. Let's read this. This is talking about how Leviathan in the dark realm has a lot of authority. It says, can you draw out Leviathan the crocodile with a fish hook? The answer is no. Press down his tongue with a cord. The answer is no. Can you put a rope in his nose? No. Or pierce his jaw through with a hook or a spike? No. Will he make supplications to you begging to be spared? No. Will he speak soft words to you to coax him, you to treat him kindly? No. Will he make a covenant with you for you to take him or your servant forever? The answer is no, 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 no. Can you put him on a leash? No. Now go to verse, I think it's verse 8. It says this, can you fill his skin with harpoons or his head with fishing spears? Now listen to this warning, listen to me. Lay your hand on Leviathan, remember your battle with him, and never do such an ill-advised thing again. You are never to cast out and rebuke Leviathan. Because when you lay your hand on him, you'll remember that battle. And you'll never do such an ill-advised thing again because he'll kick your butt. And everybody goes, what? That's true. That's why Jesus told us how to handle these serpents. With exosia authority, the power of judicial decisions from the court, where these serpents have to obey the official court decree from heaven that you put in in the name of Jesus. Don't get cocky. Don't be down here. Don't do it. People that do that, they get their butts kicked. I, I went to a meeting one time, and I prayed for this guy, because after I taught that, he came up to me and he said, my prayer partner and I met for 25 years to pray every Tuesday night, my best friend, and we decided one month to take on Leviathan, and we stood up, and we rebuked him, and we cast him out, and we bound him, and we did this and that, and he goes, and right after that, he died, and I had a stroke. And he still had the effects of the stroke until I prayed for him. He got healed and he put that cane down. And he could walk. Okay? The pastors of that same church came to me and said, Katie, years ago, me and my wife, when she was pregnant, we went after Leviathan. We rebuked him. We bound him. We cast him out. And we had a miscarriage and lost the baby. What does it say in Job 1? Job says, curse the day I was born. I wish I was still born. I wish I was miscarriage. Curse the breast. Curse the womb. They laid their hand on Leviathan, and they remembered the battle, and they never did such an ill-advised thing again. You are not to do that. You are supposed to tell him to come out of your life by order of the holy court because you are walking in your exosia authority that Jesus Christ himself gave you. The power of judicial decision. Jesus gave it to you. This is not me telling you to do something. Oh, this is New Testament, Kate. It's not Old Testament. I'm telling you what Jesus told you to do. I'm telling you to do what Jesus, how he told you to handle serpents. And that includes Leviathan, who you can't lay your hand on. How many of you have ever laid your hand on Leviathan, rebuked him, bound, and cast him out? Come on, it's okay. 
It's all right. We all make the mistake. Come on. My people perish for lack of knowledge. That's it, liars. Come on. I'm going to break that curse off you. How many of you got your butt kicked after you did it? Lay your hand on him. Remember the battle. And never do such a foolish thing again. Okay. Don't go around here right now and rebuke and bind Leviathan. We are going to cast him out by order of the court. In the name of Jesus. Because that's the way Jesus told us to handle this. He himself gave us that exosia authority. Okay, now. Hold up your bread and your Bible. Now, ask the Holy Spirit. What trauma are you still holding on to? You know, a lot of times, Leviathan gets his legal right to attack us because we were raped or molested or abused. Or we lost a loved one. Or we went through a painful divorce. We lost all of our possessions. We, we lost our, our finances. Our business closed down. Our churches closed down. What is the trauma that you, are still, that you still feel that you're, you're not healed of? Because now is your moment. And if you got bitter about that trauma, let's repent of that bitterness. Because that allows witchcraft to curse you. That allows him to come in and to enact a curse against you. So hold up the body and the bread and say, Lord Jesus, you died to heal me of every horrible thing that I've ever had to live through. in my soul is so excruciating it's hard for me to even breathe sometimes but I know you carried my infirmities and my wounds when you hung on the cross when I eat your flesh and drink your blood Life, life is imparted to every place where life's circumstances and trials and crises and assaults have wounded me. Your flesh was torn so that I could be healed. And your blood was poured out for my sins, like sins of pride, and sins of bitterness, and any sin that I ever commit is already under the blood. So when I take your cup, it solidifies my victory over that sin. And it also heals my soul. Because when I drink the cup, my soul is refreshed, nourished, and strengthened. So as I partake of you right now, my soul is flooded with your healing presence. My soul is filled with your power and your glory. My soul is transformed and made whole. My broken soul, my broken heart is mended and made perfect in you. I thank you that as I do this in remembrance of your great victory, I am healed. And all trauma is removed from every part of my inner man. In Jesus' name. Now just take half, because we're going to do one more. Okay. say, Lord, my body holds the memory of trauma. It remembers that accident. It remembers that physical abuse. 
It remembers the molestation. It remembers the stress that I held on to as I battled to fight my way through that trial so I could survive. But you're the living bread. It brings life to my flesh. As I take this, my dirt body, my earthen body, will vomit out the memory that it's holding on to of that trauma. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say every organ that has been cursed because of that trial, that trauma, every bone, every muscle, every tendon, my skin that was injured, cut, or illegally touched in any way will shed out, push out, erase, and dissolve that memory so I can be well and healed. Every system in my body will receive your life, my respiratory system, my reproductive system, my digestive system, my hormonal system, my skeletal system, my muscular system, my circulatory system, every system in my body is pushing out that bad memory and receiving the living bread, the bread from heaven that brings life. As I eat this, I will never die. So I partake right now. Hold the cup, hold the cup, I'm sorry, hold it, sorry. Say again, I receive healing, supernatural healing for my soul. It's being nourished, refreshed, and strengthened. I rebuke every trauma. I curse trauma at the root. Like the fig tree, it will never produce fruit again. I speak to my soul. I speak to my body. And I say, trauma, you're cursed. You are fruitless. You will never produce fruit. Because my soul is being refreshed, nourished, and strengthened as I drink of his blood. Now receive it in Jesus' name. Now, I want you to stand up and we're going to sing a song. And then I'm going to do some other ministry. But we're going to sing because as we do, that spirit is going to lift off of you by order of the court. Now everybody say this with me as we stand up to sing. Say, Lord Jesus, now... I decree, I will not touch Leviathan. I will not lay my hand on him. But God, with his sharp, unrelenting, and strong sword, will visit and punish Leviathan. He will have to come out by order of the court. The court is releasing a judicial decree because I have been given XOC authority to go to court against him. As I sing, I believe the angels, the thousands upon thousands that are in the Ancient of Days court will come and pull that demon off of me so I can be free. As fiery judgments are released from the throne while I worship to heal my soul even further and burn up that enemy. Now I lift up my worship to the Lord in Jesus' name. Come on. Jesus, Jesus. Come up front if you, you want. Come to the altar. Tremble. Jesus, Jesus. 
You silence every fear. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Every fear today, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, the name, the name, the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Darkness, oh, Jesus, Jesus, your name is a light, your name is a light, the shadows can't deny, oh, your name cannot be overcome, your name is a light. Darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, silence free. Shaking about, they 
shout to the Lord? Will you shout? Can you shout to the Lord? Come on, keep shouting. 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 that curse I break that witchcraft curse that's on you I break it right now I say that curse is illegal the causeless curse cannot alight Jesus has already become the curse for you I release the judicial decision against every witchcraft spirit against every sorcery spirit against every wizardry spirit against every Jezebel spirit right now in the name of Jesus now now I speak to those idols, those altars of idols that are in your life and in your soul. And I command them to break apart, to pour out ashes, and to become not effective in your life. I judge them right now. I judge them in the court of heaven right now in the name of Jesus. And I release power of judicial decisions against every crocodile, against every serpent, against every leviathan, against every dragon, against every python, right now in the name of Jesus. And I say you have to come up by judicial decree. Every one of you unwind. Every one of you unwind. Every one of you unwind. Every one of you come out. Go to the fiery pit by judicial decree and burn and never return right now. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, you make darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Silence for Jesus, Jesus. You make darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Silence for to kick the dust off your feet because you've been with people or in places that were carrying that Leviathan spirit it was twisting you up now kick the dust off your feet and break your agreement with that place and depart do not go back do not go back right now shake your dust kick it off your feet and I release peace peace upon you in the name of Jesus right now somebody you are having heart problems you're being healed right now Heart problems are being healed right now. I decree a new heart for you. A new heart for you in the name of Jesus right now. New heart for you in the name of Jesus. The serpent has unwound from squeezing your heart. From squeezing your heart. Respiratory problems are being healed right now. Respiratory problems. Take a deep breath because it's going to feel different than it has for years. Because a serpent has unwound from you right now, right now, right now, right now. I see snakes that were on people's feet. They were trying to guide your walk. They were trying to trip you up. They were trying to dictate where you went. And it was causing you to make bad decisions. Those serpents are fleeing out the door right now off your feet. Now you're wearing the gospel of peace, the shoes that bring the good news. Right now in the name of Jesus, I see you. People carrying around handbags full of snakes. Those snakes were wrapped around your money. They're squeezing out your gains and your ability to prosper, to get bonuses, to increase, to receive new monies, to receive opportunities, open doors, to receive favor, to start a business and a church. And those serpents, I see the hand opening the bag and those serpents are fleeing for their life and they're all on fire. Fire, I said 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 fire, I 
said fire I said fire 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 Leviathan headache is gone. Wave at me. Wave at me. If the look, let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty. Come on, wave, 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 wave. One, two, 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 three, two, four, two, five, six, seven, twenty, 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 Lots of people. Okay, how many people the swirling has stopped now? Wave at me. About 15, 16 people. Okay, all right. How many people feel better? How many people had water drainage from their eyes, ears, nose? Something like, you know, water, water. Raise your hands, wave. Wave really big. Lots of people got healed of trauma. Okay, how many people feel better in their physical body? Like you have a pain that you had before is gone now. Pain gone, something gone. Raise your hands and wave and I'm gonna count. Ready, some sort of miracle in your body. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Keep waiting. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 77, 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 8, 7, 9, 88, 1, 9, 2, 82 people, let's give God a praise. Now, I know it's 5 o'clock and we gotta go, but if anyone here has been sexually molested or raped or abused, that way and you don't feel like you got a healing then please stay and my and my team I'm gonna call up the IMC team please come up forward and we're gonna pray for you so everyone else I hope this is okay is this okay this is okay okay just want to check with the bosses here checking in with the bosses okay but yeah go ahead yes announcement go ahead Hey everybody, I know some of you leave. I, some of you heard this earlier. We are clearing the entire room out. Right now there's 640 chairs in here. We're gonna be at 900 chairs, okay? No one's stuff can stay. When you come back, these doors over here to your left, it says exit on the side, we'll have a new line. At 615, that will open, okay? So be back here at 630, because tonight you are joining Glad Tidings. I am seeing Glad Tidings. It's gonna be an awesome night. It's gonna be on fire. There's gonna be over a thousand people here. So this building will fill up and will overflow across the street. So if you guys don't pick your stuff up, you can buy it on Marketplace. Take it with you. If it's a friend of yours, take their stuff. We have to clear the whole building. Don't leave right now. If you don't want to, we can worship it. We, we're gonna set the whole room. So we're gonna clear it out when we're done here. 
come back. 6.15 there. If you've got a wristband, if you've got a bring it. If you don't have a wristband because you were, took a shower, just come, get in line, we'll figure it out. Fair? Awesome. So 6.15 there, 6.30, we're going to let everybody in the back doors. It's going to be pure chaos and awesomeness. And God's going to show up to me a great evening. Thank you. Okay, guys, go get your stuff and then make way. But if there are people here that have been molested or raped or anything, then stay up here. My team, where's my team? Raise t hands, team. Thank you for being present. Team, can we have the team down here too? One side and the other side. Breast cancer, yes. Who's got the breast, Who's got the breast cancer? Okay, breast cancer people up here, please. Okay. Okay, um, here's team right here, and then team's over here. Team is going to walk you through. There are people who are waving their hands, our team. Okay, team, can you get against the wall so people know it's you? Get more communion, guys, because you're gonna take it while team prays for you if you've been molested or abused in any way, okay? There's communion right here. We're gonna take, we're gonna take communion again. Team has been personally trained by me to assist you while I pray for some cancer people, okay?